Welcome to the Cashflow Ninja, the podcast sharing how to create and grow income streams and manage, multiply, and protect your wealth in the new economy. Are you tired of trading your time for money? Do you desire freedom today instead of retirement in 10, 20, or 30 years? I'm MC Lobsher, and this is the Cashflow Ninja. This is Cashflow Ninja. I'm MC Lobsher, and thank you so much for joining me in another episode of the Cashflow Ninja podcast. I appreciate you spending your most valuable resource, your time, once again with me in today's show. Please be sure to check out all of our past episodes uh, at CashflowNinja.com. There's over 650 episodes already at CashflowNinja.com of me interviewing amazing Cashflow Ninjas on the show along with community resources and tools that's at CashflowNinja.com. I've got a fantastic show for you today uh, with a returning guest, Doug Casey. Uh, Doug Casey is a legendary investor with so many, so many popular books and famous books. Very well uh, known book is The International Man and also Crisis Investing, which we might find ourselves in another uh, time period uh, where we can draw from the experience and the lessons of the book of crisis investing to apply uh, to the times that we find ourselves in today. In my hands, I have the best-selling book ever in the country of Rhodesia. I have with me today the author of this book, Doug Casey. A uh, fantastic book, and uh, all of Doug's books are phenomenal. He's got another book out, by the way, Assassin, which uh, I'm sure he's going to share a little bit more about today. Um, it's the third book in the series, which I highly, highly recommend. I'm anticipating my copy to arrive any day soon now and looking forward to that. But great to see you again, Doug. Thanks, MC. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm speaking to you right now from the People's Republic of Aspen, Colorado. Beautiful, beautiful part of the a beautiful part of the world. Uh, listen, uh, I can complain about this place being absolutely chock a block with uh, socialists and Biden supporters, but it could be worse. I could find myself in the ghetto in Detroit, so no complaints. So uh, you're up in in the states um, uh, visiting for some business. You've got a f fantastic new book out, Assassin. Uh, do you want to share a little bit about the book? Uh, there you go. Uh, that you did with John Hunt. Uh, the third one in the High Ground series, correct? Yeah. The first one. We're fought, we're tracing our hero Charles Knight uh, from age 23. Uh, we're up to book three now. So um, first book, Speculator. Uh, talks about gold, gold mining, speculation, and bush wars in Africa. Second one, Drug Lord, where he gets into the drug business. Uh, he gets into a lot of trouble. He's put in jail for two years, which is where Assassin starts out with. He's doing two years of hard time. And uh, after they steal his money again, so now he's pissed off. And he decides that there are some people that just need killing some bad actors that you just have to remove them. So this book, Assassin, a lot of people are gonna think it's about Trump. It's not, incidentally, although it's set in the here and now. Uh, essentially, it's a morality tale. Is it right or wrong, good or evil, to engage in political assassination? A lot of discussion of, of that. People don't talk about, is it really right or wrong to kill somebody in high government office? And then we talk about techniques of doing it. And we talk about whether it's actually practical. In other words, is it like pulling shark's teeth? Um, and, and, and then from here, this book, which is actually quite good because I've been reading it as a reader, as opposed to a writer or an editor. And I'm really pleased. It's, uh, I think we've outdone the Jack Reacher novels and the CB Box novels and all that because it's got lots of really interesting data in it, in addition to having a hell of a story, which will continue later in the next book where he's accused of being a terrorist, which is a real naughty thing to be accused of in today's world. <laughs> so anyway, buy Assassin, it's on Amazon today. Yeah, absolutely, I love that, because ter 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 cool. terrorist too, I mean, you're either a freedom fighter or a terrorist, right? Whichever label you put on, they put on you. Yeah, or, or maybe if you're neither, you're at least a rebel, which is kind of in between freedom fighter and terrorist. 
Yeah, I really, I really enjoy what you've done with these taboo topics. That those topics will be very tough to engage people on and have a philosophical and moral discussion about it. Because if you start someone and say, "Well, let's talk about drug dealing," as you covered in the in the previous no novel or this one, political ass assassination, it's it's not very uh, palatable for the majority of folks. You've done a great job in in just bringing it and in, in a in a very enjoyable manner. Having you look at it and, and questioning a lot of this, right? You know, MC, this is why, although Aspen's a very social place, I'm rarely, actually never, invited to uh, dinner parties because I can do five minutes on the weather, the state of the roads, and sports. Okay, now let's talk about something interesting, and that means philosophy. And when you talk about philosophy, what is practically, you know, I, I, I'll talk to the person, let's talk about some philosophical issues. And they'll say, yeah, I love philosophy. They all say that. <laughs> but what is practical and applied philosophy? Well, it is either politics or religion. The two things that you're never supposed to talk about. So uh, I like to amuse myself. I, I don't amuse my, my dinner companions often because their views are very collectivist, very statist, very liberal. And uh, anyway. Listen, I like to have fun. And it, and it brings up an interesting point of where we are now. We, I'd remark earlier, one of our conversations when you were down in Uruguay was, uh, I believe it was two years ago when they, when, when they had another Supreme Court nominee <laughs> hearing, uh, which was a complete circus. And here we are having another one on top of another election. It feels like every year there's an election almost. Or when this one's done, you'll enter the, another election cycle after another election cycle. Um, but it, it seems like there's a, there's a big battle between these ideas, what you just mentioned, the, the collectivism, which have basically swallow, swallowed the, the globe versus uh, the freedom-seeking, freedom-loving folks that are producers and creators. Are the producers and creators are fighting a losing battle here? What, what, what are your take on things? Yes, I'm afraid that we are. I hate to say that, but uh, we're in the position of people in the Roman Empire in the fourth century, where uh, it's clear that it was falling apart from the inside, not to mention the barbarians at the gate. I mean, that, was, that wasn't the real problem. But uh, yeah, uh, it's, look, trends in motion tend to stay in motion until they reach a crisis where anything can happen. And right now, we here in the United States are at a crisis that is similar to that of France in 1789. And let me hasten to add that I would have been happy to see Louis XVI, XVI overthrown, XVI. except he was replaced by Robespierre, and then Napoleon, it got worse. Uh, or a crisis, a crisis like, like in, in Russia, Russia in 1917. I would have been happy to get rid of Nicholas too, except then they got Lenin, and then they got Stalin, or, or the great cultural revolution in China in 1966. That's what we're going through right now in the US. It's dangerous, and the issue is in doubt. Uh, but the trend has been down for civilization for so long, I'm not talking about technology, that's gotten better and better, thank God. But uh, civilization, I'm afraid that uh, things are gonna take a turn for the worst in this election. I, I, I put a money bet on Trump, I bet 100 ounces of silver with Marin Katusa in 2016 that Trump was gonna win, and I, I won. Just a gentleman's bet. But uh, this time I won't make that bet, I think that uh, we're going to see the Harris regime uh, as of November sometime. And that's going to have a different, uh, different little impact there. I mean, the, one of the things that, that I think we had in one of our previous discussions, too, was, as you mentioned, the, the war has sort of been lost because if you look at younger folks today, you, you know, you see all the studies out there about you know, X percentage, a very high, a high number. I don't remember quite the exact accurate number, but... 50%, I think you're going to... Yeah, way over 50% think socialism is a good idea, and and they've completely gone to the other side. So how do you... 
how do you restore certain core values? Well, it's very, very tough to do that through the education system, but it's com completely been, have been taken over by, by the socialists. So uh, that and now the new, we're, you know, the trend stays in motion until it, it, it basically goes, goes and crashes. So what are some of the, what are some of the things that you're seeing um, happening post-election? Uh, like with every election, half the country's very, very happy. The other half is very, very unhappy. <laughs> and then there are folks trying to figure out how to position themselves and, 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 and what to make of this. What, 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 are, you, what, what are you seeing happening post-election? We're going to be lucky if we don't get an actual civil war. Life settlement investments have allowed financial and banking institutions to not only buy their equity contractually, but also diversify their capital from any economic, market, and geopolitical risk. It's been part of the billion dollar blueprint followed by institutional investors. And if you're an accredited investor, you can also now participate in this vehicle with enormous growth potential. You can watch an informational webinar presented by one of the premier organizations providing life settlement investments for number of solutions at cashflowninja.com forward slash life settlements. Uh, the best case since people in so-called blue and red counties, they actually hate each other. There's not going to be any happy Thanksgiving dinners because unless everybody shares the same exact political views, there are going to be arguments, even at Thanksgiving dinner, unpleasantry. So uh, the best case is that the country parts, the, these different areas part company with each other. If they don't part company, uh, that means one is going to try to take over the government in Washington, D.C. and impose its will on the other. And that is not going to be very pleasant at all. I mean, look, they say we had a civil war in the U.S. from 1861 to 1865, but it wasn't a civil war. It was a, it was a failed secession movement. The South just wanted to go their own way. And we can talk about how slavery gets brought into this. That was actually had very little to do with the civil war, uh, or, or I should say the war between the states because it wasn't a civil war, actually. It was a war of secession. I don't know what we'll have this time, a war of secession or a civil war, but uh, you can't have two antagonistic cultures with antagonistic beliefs living in the same political unit, especially at a time which is so highly politicized, where everybody thinks that it's all about what the government does. The government's got to do this. The government's got to do that. The government's going to save me. The government's going to kiss everything and make it better. The, uh, the spirit of the century, I'm afraid, is uh, running against us. Yeah. No, uh, it, it is certainly scary. scary and uh, a lot of folks listening to, to us and listening to our show definitely want the government just to get out of the way so we can build our businesses and, and innovate and produce products and services which the market uh, appreciates and enjoys. And... Um, lets us know whether they do like it or not or want, want it or not. Um, so uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the wealth in the wealth game, one of the things that I've learned from you too is, especially where we are now, and maybe you want to comment on that in the economy, is you want to be one of those folks that really, really focuses on preservation of it and protecting it because in a, in a chaotic cycle, uh, it's, it, it's a great equalizer of wealth and, and distributor of wealth. Um, where do you see we are right now? Because the election obviously has taken the eye off of it. We haven't really touched on 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 the the whole uh, the virus episode and the uh, theatrics and the response and and how that's played into the economy. Maybe you want to talk a little bit about that and what you see. I know you had mentioned we're in, we've been in the eye of the the hurricane for a while, where, where do you see us now? And maybe comment on the, the economy and, and things you're seeing there. Well, in 2008, I said that we were entering the Greater Depression, which is going to be much worse, much longer lasting, and much different from the unpleasantness of 1929 to 1946. So we've just left the eye of this hurricane, this very large eye, where the government poured trillions of dollars on the water, oil on the water, 
and now we're really in for something. Uh, I don't know now that, uh, well, I guess they're going to start up throwing money at people again so they can pay their rent because there's going to be millions of people that can't pay their rent and haven't been paying it, incidentally. Uh, they're going to have to start paying it up and catch up because the landlord's got to pay the mortgage to the bank. He's got to pay his taxes to the government. He's got to pay utilities. So that can't go on forever. So I don't know what they're going to do when there's millions of people that can't pay their rent or can't pay their mortgage at the same time as bankrupt local governments are, are going to be raising real estate taxes because obviously everybody that owns real estate is a rich guy. And how are they going to pay the utilities? Because, uh, you know, utility companies actually have to buy uh, oil and coal and gas and things like that and pay their workers. So what's going to happen there? Uh, so what the government's going to do is it's going to create trillions more dollars. And it doesn't matter whether it's Harris and Biden or Trump. They both are committed, both philosophically and out of necessity, they think to creating more and more money. So it's gonna destroy the dollar, it's gonna crank even greater distortions into the economy, which are gonna to have to be unwound. And we're gonna have all kinds of civil ruckus here, both from people that have lost everything they had, lost their businesses, that capital's wiped out, now they don't know what to do, can't get a job. Uh, look, well, this, this is the, the biggest, biggest thing, thing, as far Sorry. as I'm concerned, this depression, I'm just talking the economics now, is going to be the biggest thing since the founding of this country. And this is a watershed where everything could change. This is much bigger than uh, 911. Yep. This and is serious. This brings me and leads me into that question. When you have, uh, you, have the, you have the International Monetary Fund looking at all of this and going, we need to have a new Bretton Woods agreement over the past week, I mean, they're seeing this massive unraveling because we've been sp sp having these conversations and you've been talking about this for years. I mean, even on the Phil Donahue show, uh, when you brought up the book Crisis Investing, uh, talking about how, how unsustainable all of this is, it looks like we're here. And I think people are getting scared if they're looking and saying, guys, I think we need to sit down and we just basically need to to sign a new agreement and, and, and organize, you know, start, start anew or do something different. Um, it seems like a lot of folks are, are reaching for the panic button. Uh, well, they, they should be, actually, because um, <clears throat> something that has been inevitable for a long time, and actually Western civilization itself has been declining since the start of the First World War, and it's been declining at an accelerating rate as we've been more and more politicized. So now the inevitable has become the imminent. And I don't know if they can wring one more uh, good time Charlie Boom out of this or not. I kind of hope uh, Trump wins. As much of an economic disaster, we can talk about why, I mean, the good things and the bad things that Trump has done. Uh, because at least maybe we'll have four years of possible Indian summer, where at least he'll keep a, a lid on the volcano for four years. But um, it, it really, it, where you can, where you've gotten kind of like your final warning before it hits the fan. But I don't know, what should you do right now is the question, perhaps. I mean, we can talk about what you should do with your money, what you should do with yourself, uh, where you should do it. Uh, I, I've thought about this. I've come up with answers. I don't know if they're the right answers. I hope they are. Well, yeah, I, I, would, I would love, I love to I, hear I some ideas. Wrong, I, hope, I hope we go back to, you know, happy days and father knows best and Ozzy and Harriet and stuff like that. But we're not. But I hope we do. Yeah, I would, I would love to hear some of the, those ideas that you have of what, what could people be doing in a, in a time like this uh, to, to protect to protect, uh, protect themselves and f their families physically, their financial wealth. Uh, I, I, I mean, there's a lot, this is, this is a time unlike, uh, I know people say that, but I think for, as you mentioned, this is gonna be a, a, a massive, massive, massive uh, next six months, next year. 
Yeah, and right now we're, you know, this is still kind of, even though we've entered the storm, eh, things are still fairly metal, mellow right now, except for some riots in places like Portland and Kenosha. And there'll be a lot, lots more uh, if, uh, if Trump wins on November 3rd, I'm sure. So what should you do? As far as I'm concerned, the world is now highly politicized, much more than it's been in the past, where everybody relies on the government and thinks the government is the answer to their questions. So you're, as big as your economic and financial dangers are today, your political risks are even greater. Therefore, you should try to diversify yourself politically. Now, if you're in a position to do so financially, you should have a crib outside of your home country, wherever your home country is, it doesn't matter. You should have something in the next political jurisdiction where things might be mellower. You don't wanna be trapped like a lobster because they're gonna lock all these countries down with foreign exchange controls and the rest of it. So you can, if you can diversify internationally, good. Do it now while you still can. If you can't diversify internationally, then I would look to move to a small town. And I say that both because it's economically smart and um, it's sociologically smart. I mean, my friend James Altucher, I don't know if you know him or not. Yeah. He's, he said, you know, New York is a dead duck and I'm moving out. <clears throat> and he's a lifelong New Yorker. Um, well, I don't know if New York is gonna get as bad as that, as that movie with Kurt Russell, Escape from New York. A great movie, incidentally, I enjoyed it. Right. But uh, uh, listen, uh, if these idiots, idiots like, like de Blasio and, and Cuomo uh, keep doing stupid things and locking down tighter and tighter, if you have any money or sense, you get the hell out of New York. It's impossible. There's nothing to keep you there. No restaurants, no theater, no arts, but you got you know, bums in the street and, and taxes going. Get the hell out. Yeah, it'll be like Escape from New York, or God forbid, like Mad Max. So uh, move to a small town. Now here I am in the People's Republic of Aspen, Colorado. We're not gonna have BLM people marching in the streets. That's not gonna happen. But uh, I don't like the ambiance of this town anymore. I mean, it's full of people that, as long as I've been here now, there's too many of these lefties that don't like me and I don't like them. So maybe I'll transplant to Wyoming or someplace, I don't know where. So you ought to think of doing that no matter where you are. If you're living in the suburbs of Chicago, get the hell out. Suburbs of New York, get the hell out. Los Angeles, get the hell out. You know, all these states are awful and the cities that you might be living near. You don't need to look at, we're talking, are we on uh, Skype or Zoom, I forget. Uh, Zoom. Works perfectly. <laughs> uh, also, this, is, this COVID hysteria, is destroying the, the social fabric of the US. Because here in Aspen, I'm a member of two luncheon groups that have been around for decades. And, and I, think I think they've, they've ceased, ceased to exist, exist and they won't come back. So the social bonding between the guys that came to that, it's gone, it's gone. Yeah. And my Monday poker group, it's gone. I don't think it's coming back. And this is happening all over the country with Rotary Clubs and Kiwanis and Optimus, yep. things like that. I mean, a lot of them are, are just not gonna make it for all kinds of reasons. So um, I'd move to a small town if you're gonna stay in your own country, quite frankly. Definitely for, uh, for physical safety. And we've, we've, been, we've been talking about the, the massive trend in real estate of folks moving to smaller towns because you know, uh, we almost, one of the things I, I think that COVID has done is almost fast forwarded the world in certain areas 10 years into the future, because we would have been working remotely and virtually in 10 years, everyone, right? The studies show people are happier, more productive, the employers gain more benef uh, benefit from it. Everyone has healthier, better, well-balanced and more productive employees. <laughs> so, so. And look at the bright side, the yeah. fact that these corrupt teachers unions have kept the schools from opening. To me, this is a good thing because your kids won't be indoctrinated by these morons for eight hours a day. 
it gives you a chance to homeschool them and actually discuss subjects that they're supposed to be studying instead of sitting bored in a desk surrounded by other young yahoos listening to a moron in most cases, not all, uh, yap at them with politically correct stuff. So hopefully it's gonna destroy the uh, infrastructure uh, of education in this country. Do you know that the cost, the average cost nationwide of educating a K through 12 student is $12,000 a year? Shocking. That's, That's insane. insane. And yep. it all goes to administration and paper pushers and things like that, unnecessary. MC Lobshire, the creator of the Cashflow Ninja and Cashflow Coach at Producers Wealth, where we help our clients integrate infinite banking with their business and investments. To learn how you can create your own banking system to turbocharge your investments and business in 30 days or less, go to yourownbankingsystem.com. That's yourownbankingsystem.com. Socrates didn't need the equivalent of $12,000 a year to walk around and discuss ideas and concepts and the knowledge they had then. We should go back to that uh, for as much as possible or form a, a, little, a little union with, with people that are like-minded of neighbor, neighbors. And you can hire an Oxford graduate, who's if you can find one that's ideologically sound, to tutor five or six kids <coughs> at the same cost that's being spent to um, inculcate young chimpanzees. So there are bright sides to all this too. Yeah, I don't think there's anything that we cannot learn on online. And that's one of the things no, that I nothing. appreciate about you too, just picking up on skills and learning the online. It's, 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 a, it's a whole new world where you can learn anything that you want online. Exactly, with the best with the best instructors in the world. And if you go to a, a school, even if it's a university, and you have the best instructor in the world and he gives a lecture, well, you're still, your mind might wander and your notes won't be good. But if that is on video, you can listen to it again and again until you absorb what you need and want to. So this is, this is a bright side, a real bright side. Yeah. I, hope, I hope it disbands the whole rotten university and school system all over the world. Yeah, if you're looking to build a business in an online business, you can find someone online that's built multi-million dollar businesses actually themselves. And you don't find yourself, what was that movie, Rodney Dangerfield, where he goes back with his son to college and <laughs> sitting down and the professor's trying to tell him how to start a business. <laughs> Another example of a movie it was Twins with Arnold Schwarzenegger, where, where you know, he's, he's brought up and homeschooled on a desert island. <clears throat> and he becomes, looks like Arnold, and he's a genius. And meanwhile, Danny DeVito grows up in the New York schools, and he looks like Danny DeVito, and he's got bad ethics. And so really, lots of advantages from many, many points of view to uh, homeschooling. Yeah, I think the education trend is something definitely to jump on. And for entrepreneurs looking for opportunities in this new disruptive world, I think there's going to be plenty of opportunities to, to disrupt education. And I think uh, folks can expect a lot of these uh, tax-free hedge fund entities known as colleges and universities uh, to, to disappear shortly. So you've mentioned to diversify yourself internationally. Make sure that you're physically safe. Uh, in uh, out of out of hot pockets, uh, cities, areas, and so forth. On the money side and the economy side, it's it's gonna it's gonna be pretty it's gonna be pretty brutal and pretty wild. Um, what 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 can folks do there? We touched on the Bretton Woods Agreement. We've seen now you know countries coming out with cryptocurrencies, so there might be new things entering there. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty in the financial world. What are some of the things that folks uh, should be looking at doing to potentially protect themselves? Well, I think the stock market could go higher as they create trillions and trillions more dollars. A lot of it's going to keep flowing into that. But that said, I still don't want any part of the stock market. Uh, it's a bubble. It's a huge bubble at this point. So dump your uh, mutual funds. The only thing certain about a mutual fund 
is that it's going to lose one to two percent per year in value for management fees and such. So dump that, get out of the bond market. That's a triple threat to your capital. You've got interest rate risks, which are only going up, which means your bonds are going down. You've got credit risk, which means that things could be defaulted on and will be in this over indebted world. And you've got currency risk, the dollar is turning to toilet paper. So where you ought to be is gold. And I hate to say that with gold at 1900, but it's going a lot higher because it's the only financial asset that's not simultaneously somebody else's liability. So uh, that's, that's where you should, should be. be. And, and gold, gold mining, mining stocks, stocks as a speculative vehicle. I expect from current levels, they're going to go 10 to 1, which is typical. In, in the five gold mining stock bull markets since 1971, when gold was freed up, uh, we've had five. And the average rise of junior producers and exploration stocks and developers was 10 to 1, with some going 100 to 1, and some, believe it or not, going 1,000 to 1. Uh, you have to get lucky to get those. But uh, you should own a lot of gold stocks right now. So that's the investment advice. And forget about being an employee. That's over. You've got to find goods and services that you can provide as an entrepreneur. You can do it. Everybody can do it. Yeah, that's that's a that's a great point. It, you know, we talked about how the world's going to change how we work. I mean, unless you're working for a, t a tech giant and the the <laughs> the pool for that is done, uh, they're, they're they're hiring remotely. So now instead of competing with a small talent pool in San Francisco, you're now competing with the world basically because all of their their employees are are, are global. Um, so uh, no, absolutely. It was the, if there ever was a time to start something and to start and to, to build a business uh, and to figure out what people are going to what people are going to need. What are some of, what are some ideas and things you're looking at there, Doug? Because you're always um, ahead of on, on these things too. What what are, what do you think people will need more of in the in the coming years? Oh. Well, I'm not sure. The market has to tell me. And yeah. I'm not looking for those things right now. I basically just deal in securities as opposed to starting businesses per se. Yeah. Um, look, look, if, if, if you have a listener in his 20s, certainly, or 30s, um, you want to go someplace where you're not on a level playing field. I don't like level playing fields. Everybody says, oh, you want a level playing field. Well, I don't want a level playing field. I want a, one that's tilted in my advantage where I got the high ground. So if, if you're a young guy, and, and better a young guy than a young girl, to be quite candid, uh, I'd go to Africa. Because you go there, you automatically got knowledge and experience, capital, that the locals don't have. And you land there, you're different, you're from afar, they all want to get to know you. And uh, you could move up the pecking order real quickly. Whereas if you stay in the US, there's a million, there's 10 million other guys just like you. So uh, get on a plane. And that's where the opportunity is now. It's like the Wild West in the US 150 years ago. That's, yeah. where, you go. I, I, that's where I'd make my fortune today, quite frankly. And there's a, I mean, uh, talk about entrepreneurs just growing up in South Africa and seeing the what folks are up to there, and and in the rest of Africa too. There's, there's a lot of uh, amazing entrepreneurs in those countries that might be looking for a partner that can help them grow and scale businesses, which they are not able to do on themselves because. Uh, they don't necessarily have, let's just say, collateral, right? Someone in, in maybe in, in the towns of uh, ships of South Africa that's building a business might not have the assets to place as collateral to be able to scale a business that he's, uh, that he's involved with. Yeah, that's right. And of course, they have foreign exchange controls there. And that's something that you can take advantage of because a lot of people feel trapped in South Africa, want to get out. Well, at the same time, you might find a good entrepreneur in a township and want to get in so you can do each other some good there. Although I don't think South Africa would be my first choice. No. Um, it's, it's got too many problems because of the racial situation. I would, I'd rather, I'd, to, my, to my way of thinking, the shallow end of the pool in Africa would be Namibia, actually. 
A lot of great things about Namibia, and I've, there's actually some of my high school and university friends that 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 have moved there, and and they love it. Uh, they love love the country, the people. It's a, also another beautiful part of the world. It's the size of Texas, with only two with only two million people. Yeah, that. That, that and and talking about a high ground, you know, not a level playing field, and yeah, yeah, yeah makes perfect fit for definitely fits into for, uh, fits into that. Um, some of the other industries, one industry that you were also ahead of the curve was um, the marijuana in the industry, and uh, what, what what do you see happening there? Is this? Do you think that governments are finally going to start to realize? that there's a lot of potential <laughs> taxes that could be collected on a federal scale in the United States? Uh, no question that marijuana is going to be legalized nationally in the U.S., as it is in many states right now. I mean, <clears throat> here in Colorado, I can walk down town and there's a, there's a half a dozen pot stores here in the small town of, of Aspen. But it's going to go to psilocybin and it's going to go to ayahuasca and uh, Ibogaine and all these things are are eventually going to be legalized, as they should be, for many, many reasons. Life settlement investments have allowed financial and banking institutions to not only buy their equity contractually, but also diversify their capital from any economic, market, and geopolitical risk. It's been part of the billion-dollar blueprint followed by institutional investors. And if you're an accredited investor, you can also now participate in this vehicle with enormous growth potential. You can watch an informational webinar presented by one of the premier organizations providing life settlement investments for number of solutions at cashflowninja.com forward slash life settlements. But uh, as a, an investor, as a speculator, I think the bloom is off the rose, quite frankly. There was a bubble in pot stocks a couple of years ago where there were hundreds of little publicly traded pot companies. And, it's, you know, most of them just aren't going to make or didn't make it. And uh, so now it's a business as opposed to a speculative opportunity. Although maybe if there's somebody that comes up that's got a great little psilocybin company or, you know, that's got micro doses of LSD that it knows how to, yeah, good speculative opportunity, but I'm not looking at that now. That's kind of come and gone. Yeah. It's a growth, it's a growth 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 business, business. but it's not like a, a bubble for speculation. Cause some of those, some of those pot stocks went to hundred to one. Yeah, there was a there was a lot of lot of gains uh, uh, made in that. Speaking of uh, another area that uh, governments are going to have to react to, uh, I wanted to get your take uh, on this: is the cryptocurrencies, which I know years ago someone came down to visit you uh, at uh, Estancia uh, the Cafajete with a, with an actual Bitcoin, a coded Bitcoin. Um, so you were introduced to this uh, way, way early, too. Some, th- some thoughts on that. Um, now that governments are going to issue their own cryptocurrencies, do they coexist? Is this now uh, a, ba- a battle of wills? Uh, is, do you think that they outlaw some of this? What are some of your thoughts? Everything that government does, because it's pure force and coercion, government is not a good thing. The state is not a good thing. But they're all going to get into their own cryptocurrency equivalents, where, you know, already we don't use change, nickels, dimes, and quarters. I mean, nobody even picks up a quarter when you see it laying on the street because it's worth nothing. So they're going to stop minting them soon. And then they're going to stop minting $100 bills because only bad guys use that, uh, you know, drug dealers and, and tax evaders and money launderers. None of which are bad things, in my opinion, but another, another, another question. You're gonna, all your money is going to be digitized on your smartphone. And this is a disaster from the point of view of personal freedom. It means that the government knows everything about what you're buying and what you're selling and what you have. You got no privacy. They can, the, they'll, they'll promote it as it'll make it easy for us to give $1,000 to everybody under modern monetary theory and other fraud. But if they don't don't like like you, you. they can cut you off. If you're an enemy of the state, you don't have any money. There's no cash. 
So what are you going to use as money? You're screwed. Uh, and China is going to that very rapidly. Sweden is one European country going to it rapidly. I mean, so I'm all for Bitcoin and private cryptocurrencies, but not the state currencies. Stay away from them if you possibly can. They're a nightmare, disaster from the point of view of personal freedom. Yeah, it's going to be one of those things, too, if you look at, and there was actually a bill pro proposed, and of course, in true fashion, the title of these bills are just amazing to read. It makes for great comedy. But it's something like the Banking Fairness Act or something which included a digital dollar wallet that would be a sign. And of course, they would be able to take taxes directly from that wallet and so forth. So uh, it's baked into the cake, unfortunately. And it looks like we're being corralled, uh, the herd, into, in, into this uh, crawl, uh, which I don't think is going to be a lot of too, too much fun for a lot of folks when we do end up in there. Oh, it is it is a problem because unfortunately, due to the education system and because of all the corporations are in back of this and NGOs are in back of it and all the deep state guys are pumping it and the media is pumping these bad ideas, I'm afraid that the average person is going to go along with it and we're going to turn out to be black sheep or lone wolves. And it's not good to be a lone wolf because the because the whip dogs are going to hunt you down. So this is troubled times that we're entering right now. Best, the best you, can you can do is try to, to get, get as, as much, much money and capital as you can put together in safe places so that you can insulate yourself from these things so you're not too adversely affected by mass hysteria, hysteria and mass, mass stupidity. stupidity. Doug, thank you so much for coming on the show again and just sharing your knowledge and helping my listeners and my viewers out there prepare for uh, this extremely, extremely chaotic period that, that we're going to live through. Uh, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for providing so much value as always again. And I love, uh, love it that we always have our conversations during very interesting times. And in between the conversations, so many things uh, tend to happen uh, around the world. So it's great to, great to catch up. Um, oh, before I forget, um, definitely want to share with everyone that Doug has got a new YouTube channel out that I am a massive, massive fan uh, of. Um, every day on this YouTube channel, there's content that he publish, uh, publishes where he shares a topic or an idea or a concept and shares his thoughts uh, ar around it and about it. It's very entertaining, very insightful. I would highly recommend everyone check this out. It's, uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun to watch. And of course, his new book, Assassin, the third book in the High Ground series is available on Amazon.com. Definitely check out his book. Uh, if you haven't read his two previous novels in that series, uh, Speculator, Drug Dealer, uh, I would highly re recommend those as well. Um, all of the stuff that he puts out is, is, is quite amazing. And of course, check out internationalman.com and caseyresearch.com. Thank you so much for again spending your most valuable resource, your time with me. Uh, on the show, and please check out all of our past episodes at CashflowNinja.com, along with tools and resources for our community. Until next time, live infinitely. This presentation is for educational and informational purposes only. The information being presented and considered does not consider your particular financial objectives or situation, and it does not make personalized recommendations. This material is not intended to replace the advice of a qualified tax and legal advisor or other qualified professionals, and you should not use the information in place of a customized consultation with a licensed professional regarding your specific personal financial objectives. So situation and needs. We believe the information provided is reliable, but we do not guarantee its accuracy, timeliness, or completeness.